Hey everybody, welcome to the video. I'm here at Holy Trinity Cathedral on Green Street in San Francisco. It's the Cathedral Church of the Orthodox Church in America's Western Diocese. I wanted to show you the installation of bells here today because it is the best example that we have in the U.S. of what Orthodox Church bells are supposed to look like, how they're set up. Uh, the largest bells, the most complete and properly installed ringing system. This installation has all of those things in one place. Now, it doesn't have the biggest individual bell. Um, it doesn't have the, the largest number of bells in one set. Uh, it's not the only set of bells that's in a tower, and it's not the only set of bells that has a ringing system. But when you put all of those things together combined, it's a really extraordinary place. This tower is the model of how churches should install bells. So first of all, we're, we're in a tower. We're in uh, the middle of downtown San Francisco. It's maybe a 40, uh, 40 or 50 foot uh, distance down to the sidewalk just below us that way. You have the biggest bell that's here in the center of the tower. And I wanna point your attention to the fact that the rest of the smaller bells are all on beams that were installed in the window openings. So there's no screen here, there's no louvers. There's a door below us here down into the church that's um, an exterior door that locks. Um, there's, a, there's a tile floor below us with a floor drain and the wind and the sound of the bells can just come in and out of this whole space. There's actually some other window openings above me as well. So the sound of the bells is in no way trapped inside this space. So the tower is really highly functional in letting the sound of the bells escape out. In the past, the bells were actually all installed along one interior beam and there was no ringing system. Um, so it was very difficult uh, for one person to ring all the bells together um, and they needed to have two or maybe even three bell ringers just to ring the bells that they had. So in case you haven't seen any of my other videos, I want to just point out the particular characteristics of the ringing system uh, that's used here at the cathedral. So to start with, with the small bells, there's, there are three small bells, uh, and you ring these together uh, with three ropes uh, that have been tied together. You ring that with your right hand. Um, moving to the, to the slightly larger bells, the middle bells, you ring those bells by pushing down on these ring lines here with your left hand. Because of the way the bells need to be installed in the window openings of the tower, the next largest bell after this one uh, is actually over behind the camera on the far side of the tower from the bell that's rung um, next to it. So the ring lines here are together, um, but this bell is actually connected to lines that go up and over all the way over there. Uh, with this system is awesome because without the use of any pulleys, you have a super responsive uh, experience of ringing this bell that's eight feet to my right, uh, and this and this next bell that's just uh, just a few feet away from me. And now finally, you have these two pedals that ring the two largest bells. So the very largest bell in this whole set is 2.8 tons. And the tongue, the clapper of that bell, is at least over 100 pounds or more. So we've actually, headed, we've actually needed to uh, install some weights. There's 16 pounds of, uh, of force pushing down on the pedal to make it easier to ring this large bell. So like I showed you with the middle bell that's over here that's on the far side of the bell tower from the bell ringer, this second largest bell is rung with a pretty intricate system of... Um, interconnecting lines, but again without any pulleys, so that when you're ringing the pedal for this bell, it's very smooth and clean action. Um, you don't have any resistance from pulleys or ropes on pulleys or anything like that, so it's super smooth and clean and very precise. So now I want to highlight for you guys the individual voices that are in this tower because they're super unique and beautiful. This largest bell is 2.8 tons. It's 5,700 pounds. It was cast in 1888 and uh, given as a donation to the American Orthodox Mission, to Holy Trinity Cathedral, uh, by Tsar Alexander III of Russia in commemoration for a miraculous uh, event that happened in his life. He was in a horrible um, trail, the train derailment with all his family, and a lot of people died, but he and his family didn't. So in thanks to God, 
Um, he built a number of churches in Russia and gave this bell to Holy Trinity Cathedral here in America in 1888. In addition to the beautiful ornamentation and icons on the bells, there's three bands of inscriptions that run around the outside of the bell. All the inscriptions in the bell are in Russian, but the band here in the middle of the bell uh, says in Russian, this bell was cast for the San Francisco Cathedral of the Orthodox American Mission during the Episcopate of Bishop Vladimir at the request of the Hieromonk Joel, A.D. 1888. Here it says the weight of the bell, which is 144 poods and five pounds. Now a pood is a is a uh, outdated uh, Russian imperial measurement of weight, which is approximately 36 pounds. And the reason I'm saying this is that uh, if any of you guys uh, do CrossFit, uh, you might be familiar with the pood because uh, CrossFit measures kettlebell weights for different workouts in poods. <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing. The rest of the inscription around the middle of the bell says, uh, it was cast by the Finlansky Bell Foundry in Moscow in memory of the miraculous rescue of the Russian Emperor Alexander III and his most august family on October 17th. The inscription around the top of the bell isn't historical. It's actually a quote from the first ode of the great canon of St. Andrew of Crete, and it reads, He is my helper and protector and has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will glorify him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him, for gloriously has he been glorified. And here is the incredible voice of this bell. If I was to just wait now for the sound to die away before moving on, we might be here for a few more minutes than you guys are probably interested in watching this video. So I'm going to move on to the second largest bell. Now the second largest bell uh, was actually recast by an American bell foundry called Garrett and Company that was recovered from other bells that were actually uh, melted in a fire when the, when the cathedral burned down in a different location in the past. So it has an entirely different voice from this large Russian bell. It sounds like this. Uh, the third largest bell is actually this, this bell over here. It again, it was cast by Garrett and Company um, from metal that was recovered from other bells that were damaged in fire. The next bell is one of the original five bells that were given by Tsar Alexander III in 1888. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very old and from the same Finlansky bell foundry, and it sounds like this. Now something that I think is super interesting about the way that this church, the, the set of bells in this church just historically came to be, is the fact that this bell here that I just rang and the bell um, that is the third largest, so the fourth largest and the third largest, have uh, sort of competing, competing voices. Um, when I was setting up this ringing system, Father Kirill, who's the cathedral dean, and I um, were on two different pages about which bell's ringing line should be, um, should be where, because Almost all of the ringing system is set up, except for the pedals in this case, is set up where the, the smallest bell is on the right. And then as you go to the left, it gets larger like a piano. Um, there were, Father Kirill and I uh, were hearing two different things with these two bells. And uh, over, over time, I've realized that these two bells, this bell here and the one on the other side, are kind of like, kind of like evil twins. There's, uh, there's a, only a half step in between their main pitches, but because of the nature of bells as a musical instrument, uh, there's a ton more than just one note that's produced. And Russian bells in particular 
have a whole s a dense and rich spectrum of frequencies above and below the main, the main uh, sound that's, that's heard. And uh, just the way it works out with these two bells, the frequencies that are produced, the main pitches of the two bells kind of interact, kind of interact like this. Um, you have a, a number of frequencies here and here, and they kind of interlock. So it's a unique challenge for us um, as bell ringers and for the cathedral bell ringers to figure out how to ring these two bells uh, without having a clash. This next largest bell is actually a brand new bell that was cast in 2018 in Russia by the bell foundry Anisimov. Uh, you, some of you guys might actually know this bell foundry uh, by the name Viera. That's like its business entity name. Um, but it's, it's the Anisimov Bell Foundry. Since all the services in uh, Holy Trinity Cathedral here um, are in English now for, for a really long time, uh, the inscriptions on this bell are actually in English. There's an icon of St. Innocent, the Enlightener of America, St. Innocent of Alaska. And the inscription that's on this bell is actually connected to the inscription that's on the largest bell. So the largest bell had Ode 1 of St. Andrew of Crete's Great Canon of Repentance, and this bell has the opening line of the Irmos of Ode 2. So it says, Attend, O heaven, and I will speak, I will sing of Christ. It sounds like this. The next smallest bell from that is actually another one of the original five bells that were a gift from the Tsar, uh, from the Finlansky Bell Foundry, uh, and it sounds like this. Now the remaining three, the small bells, this trio of small bells, um, these two here were, uh, were cast in 2018, and the smallest bell uh, was added in 2019 from the same Anisimov Bell Foundry as this bell over here, and they sound like this. So in Orthodox bell ringing, the individual bells are not valued for the exact pitch that they ring. Uh, we almost never even think about the specific note uh, that individual bells ring because they're not valued for their pitch specificity, they're valued for their rich voices. One of the main tasks for Orthodox bell ringers is to discover the unique characteristics of each bell in a large set like this that was not all cast at the same time. It's our job as bell ringers to tease out uh, the particular characteristics of each bell and then start paying attention to its relationship to the bells that are next to it in the set and also bells that are farther away to find the most pleasing uh, and consonant um, intervals and relationships and also to avoid having bells ring together that don't sound as good. The individual pitch of specific bells doesn't matter. We're valuing these bells for their uh, unique characteristics of their, their entire sort of sound spectrum that's created. But it is helpful as a bell ringer to be aware of the intervals uh, that are created between each of the bells in the set. So the right hand this trio of bells in the right hand forms a nice minor triad. And from there, there's a whole step down to the next bell. And then another whole step down to the fifth bell. As you go down farther from there, there's a major third down. And like I've said before, these next two bells together are kind of like evil twins. And you can hear what I'm talking about. I'm not sure how all well this comes across in the audio recording, but in person and also to different people, um, it's, it's a subject that is open to debate which one of these two bells with the left hand is higher in pitch than the other.
you can actually take advantage of the dissonant relationship between these two bells by spacing them out as part of a larger and logical musical phrase like this. The distance between the bells um, gets much, much larger between this largest middle bell and the second largest bell. And it's not really functional to worry about identifying which, what interval that it creates. Um, the same thing between the two largest bells. But again, since this is a rhythmic style of ringing, and these are the bells that are here, uh, it works out just fine to be able to ring these two largest bells together. This church, Holy Trinity Cathedral, was founded in 1857 and is the oldest continuing existing Orthodox parish in the lower 48. Um, and although they have some incredible um, historical uh, pieces of liturgical art, um, something that I find really significant about this place in particular is that uh, they have worked really hard uh, that this church not just be a museum of artifacts, which could happen very easily with um, bells like this that are very historical, very old, and very beautiful. Uh, having spent a lot of time here working on the, on the bells in the tower, uh, I have to say that the life in Christ here uh, is very transparent. Um, there, there is no barrier for anybody who walks in off of the street to be able to come in and uh, Christ is, is witness to them in a really beautiful way. So I find it so personally interesting that this approach of combining hardcore Christian history with a very much outward facing approach to uh, the work of the church instead of being inward facing and, and being focused uh, maybe on serving one, primarily one ethnic group, being outward focused, being a missionary focused to witnessing Christ to everyone that's around in this neighborhood and in San Francisco um, at large. It's that uh, very creative and fresh approach to what it means to be a historical Christian community uh, in my opinion, that's, that's the petri dish, that's the, that's the environment in which the best liturgical art happens when you're focusing on Christ to begin with and also staying connected to history. Um, those two things working together provide a really beautiful model for what our experience as Orthodox Christians in America in 2021 can be. Oh